Hello, everyone. Um, I know some of you here, but I don't know everybody. So uh, I'm just going to start with a little bit of background. Uh, I've been editing in the, the business for 20 years now. I started uh, in Detroit at a spot house where I basically worked on commercials as an assistant editor. Moved out to Chicago in 91, and I've worked a few different places uh, since I moved out here. And I've seen everything from um, one inch and two inch tape to the introduction of beta and actually saw one of the first alphas of the Avid before they were shipping it. Um, they actually brought it to the post house I was working at and were soliciting feedback from some of the editors. I wasn't an, uh, an editor at the time, but they allowed me in the room as long as I didn't say anything. So, <laughs> so it was still kind of good. Um, in 2004, I, I left the job I was at and I started my own company. I know there's a lot of people in here have done the same thing. Um, Final Cut, and a lot of the Apple products really have uh, changed our whole industry in a way that, you know, 10 years ago seemed inconceivable. The fact that, you know, you can start your own post house with, you know, a minimal investment compared to what it was 10 years ago uh, is really pretty empowering. So uh, my wife and I decided to start a post house and uh, except for the end of last year, it's been going pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked on all kinds of different projects. Like I said, spots, uh, I've done documentary, broadcast shows, I've done a lot of broadcast series, and um, pretty much everything in between, PSAs. Uh, right now I do a lot of corporate and a lot of documentary style <clears throat> uh, news magazine uh, type work. So this is one thing I've, I've always struggled with, even though I've been doing this a long time, is how do you start out with just nothing and come up with something. And there are people who seem to have a natural ability to just do that. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not one of them though. And so it's always been a little more of a challenge, but what I've found is there's a lot of tricks you can do to kind of find that inspiration within yourself. And that's, that's kind of one thing I wanna uh, talk about today. So um, whenever I start a project, there's always questions I, I ask the client right off the bat because you know, they commonly ask for you to just do something cool and you, you kind of need a little more than that because what their interpretation of something cool is can be different from, you know, the past client. So I always start by asking if there's any kind of um, approved elements, you know, in terms of are there already graphics created, are there, are there uh, any logos, uh, did the, does the company itself any, have any kind of a color scheme? And I try to at least start there and play off things because uh, companies can get very particular about the sorts of colors and things like that that they use. So save yourself time of not having to redo everything. Um, I ask for print, print materials. Uh, for example, uh, a lot of times I'm doing videos that are going to be played at a conference. Well, the conference often comes with a brochure and it has its own little design to it and often you can tie your video into a similar look. Um, and that's the kind of thing that goes over real well with the client too because you're, you're obviously not just doing what they asked you, you're kind of looking beyond that. And the other thing that I've been running into more and more lately is the whole style guide thing. That usually comes with larger companies and lar larger organizations, but they can be extremely particular on what font you use, how far the fonts are apart, the size of the fonts, the color of the fonts, the, the colors you can and can't use, where their logo can be placed, where it can't be placed. Um, and I did do a whole program once where that style guide, I didn't ask for it and the client didn't give it to me, and all of the changes that I had to do on that video were related to nothing adhering to the style guide. So ever since then, I, I always ask for it. And um, for me personally, you know, there's a lot of things that can be driven by music. Not everything, but when, when people say, look, I want to build this crazy open and I want it to be real high energy and I want it to look cool. For me, that starts with hearing the music. What kind of music are you thinking of? Because the more I can hear the music, the more I start to see images in my mind of what I want to do and I start to get ideas. Uh, some clients prefer to just start cutting and they go, oh, we'll just we'll throw the music in later. And I really try to fight that. You can't always fight it, but I, I, I make an attempt to because I just know from experience that I can do a much better job if I start with the music and kind of build off that. So is it okay to steal? I would say yes. <laughs> Everybody does it. I think we're all inspired by things that we see on TV, in the movies, uh, things on the internet. There's, there's so many things around us all the time that you don't have to steal per se, but you can be inspired by it. Um, and I would even argue, even if you did want to steal something, try to recreate something that you really like. Try to recreate it to a T. And chances are you won't, but you'll get your own version of that and thus making it your own. 
Um, and in the process, too, you're also going to learn on how to create something that you didn't know how to do before that. And so um, I'm, I'm a very big advocate of, of just looking for things that inspire you and trying to recreate them. And actually, I was a little bit disappointed that Keith didn't do his, his planned uh, presentation tonight because it really played into what I was talking about. You were inspired by something from Comedy Central. And I think that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, and over time, things that you try to copy really turn into your own. Even if you do duplicate it, often you, you think there's ways that you would like to make it better or maybe adapt it more to your project. Um, so I don't think there should be any guilt associated with that. So television is an obvious one. I mean, everything from... Um, one, some of my favorites are HBO and Showtime. The promos that they put together are just, you know, top shelf. They're, they're really great. And in terms of getting... Uh, a look or a style or, or, or a new effect, they seem to always kind of be on the cutting edge of, of things I haven't seen before. Print ads you wouldn't think has a whole lot to do with video. I have found it to be different. A real quick story, I was doing um, a promo for a company that it was a typical thing. They come in and they say, you know, we want to do this really cool promo and make it cool. And again, I don't have much to go on, but they're really, they don't have a designer, they don't have a graphics person and they don't have a budget to get any of those things, so they're really relying on me to do it. So that day, we cut together an A-roll, and we kind of had an idea of what we were doing, but we really hadn't developed a look. And I was really, uh, I just, I couldn't come up with anything. So that night when I went home, I just grabbed a whole bunch of magazines that we had around the house, and I just started flipping through it. And I came across a print ad that the layout, the color scheme, and, and, and everything about it, I immediately knew I could adapt to this project and it actually fit the project quite well. So, so the next day I went in, I didn't bring the ad, I just came in and pretended like it was my own idea. And, uh, and I did it, and, and it was one of the best pieces of work I'd ever done. And this was when I first started to realize that even print ads can be you know, an inspiration. Because the thing is, if something is designed well, it's designed well. And maybe a different medium, it doesn't mean you can't adapt it to the medium that we all work in. Movie trailers are great for storytelling because they've only got a couple minutes and they usually tell a really long story, complicated story, very quickly. If you really, instead of getting caught up in it, if you really watch the way they cut the dialogue versus the images, it's very interesting the way they do that and there's things that, again, you can adapt to your own projects. And the, 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 the way that they uh, do text treatments, too, is something I'm always interested in because they're always doing something different with text. And since we all work with text a lot, I'm always looking for new ideas. Uh, Well-designed websites, same thing as print. And if you're really desperate and you're in a time crunch, definitely Motion, Live Type, and Adobe uh, templates are a great place to start. You can really pull things out of nowhere in a quick amount of time um, just by you know, looking at some of the things that are on your system. So uh, those are great assets to have too. And I think the important thing is this isn't anything anybody has to go out and look for. These things are in front of us all the time. It's a matter of focusing in a different way on some of these things from time to time. Not all the time, um, but there are times when I actually, even though I have a TiVo, I choose to watch commercials just because I'm looking for some new things. And um, that's, again, where I get a lot of ideas too. So finally, we're to the project details. I, we had a huge project that we were doing uh, at the office. Another editor was working on it. It was basically like a four-month editing job of a huge DVD video. So because this client had been so good to us, I decided to do a DVD pre-roll movie so that you put the DVD in. Instead of going right to the menu, it was going to go to a kind of energetic little promo that leads into the menu. So to kind of bring the, the user in, the, the viewer in right away. So uh, I decided to do this without the client's knowledge, um, just knowing him well enough that I, I figured he'd appreciate it and he'd like it. And so it was pretty much all up to me. Um, so I had no input from the client because he didn't know I was doing it. And just to let everybody know, the, the actual video was of big game hunting in Africa. I'm not going to show you anything that will offend anybody. Um, yeah, but I know it's a touchy subject, so I kind of wanted to throw it out there. I won't be offended if anybody gets up and leaves. As long as you all don't get up and leave. <laughs> <laughs> and this idea for me, okay, so I knew this was coming up. And so for several weeks, maybe even a couple months, I was kind of tuned into what I was watching and really trying to find an idea that would inspire me for the open because I really had no clue what I wanted to do. Uh, and so one day I sat down to watch a movie called Bait and the opening sequence immediately got my attention because of the energy, because of the use of graphics, because of uh, 
just everything about it, I found myself watching it over and over before I even got into the movie. And I knew that was going to be kind of my starting point. And as you'll see as, we go, as, as I get into my version of it, it looks very little like what I actually saw. But it was the, the, the kind of the starting point for me. So this is the movie intro. So I liked the energy of it. I liked uh, the kind of randomness of it. And one thing I needed to do for my project was I needed to kind of build a little bit of uh, anxiety, a little bit of tension, a little bit of excitement getting into this project because obviously hunting is, you know, something that's uh, kind of high energy. Okay, so this is basically, this is what the open is. It goes on for about two minutes, but I'm not gonna go through that. This next screen will be the actual open I did for the DVD based on this. And then after that, I'll go into the project and show you how I came up with it. Of course, from here it would go into the main menu where they could choose different options. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit challenged because of the uh, small screen size. I think as, as editors, we're all used to bigger screens. So uh, basically, I broke this down into 10 little timelines here. And this, these were actually the versions I did as I was doing it. I didn't go back later and kind of figure out what I did. This is literally how I built the project. So when I started, um, like I said, I'm inspired by the music. So I, 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 I'm almost embarrassed to say this. I spent almost four hours going through the music library trying to find that one song that would just hit me. And using stock music, it, that isn't always easy. Um, I mean, we could all think of songs that might work that we don't have the rights to use, but this, this had to be a stock library thing. And so what I did was, uh, you know, I narrowed it down to five pieces just by listening to them. I brought all five into the edit suite, and then I, uh, I just started playing around with it, and, and one became the clear winner pretty quick. And so that's what I have here, and you, you'll see too, if, I don't know if you can see it, uh, it's not even the whole thing. It's the three and a half minute piece is cut down to about 45 seconds. And so I took the parts of the music that I actually liked. And again, as I'm doing this, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to visualize in my head what I want to. So you get the idea. So as I'm, I, I'm doing this, this is pretty much the first day. I got the music and I was happy that after four hours I'd picked music. Um, uh, the next thing I did was, I, again, as I'm listening to it over and over, I started to figure out what I knew I wanted to put a message throughout it, uh, a text-based message, but I kind of wanted to pick where I was going to put it. So again, as listening to it, I'm thinking of the client, I'm thinking of the message he might want to convey. And uh, I'm just figuring out where these things going to go. And I start with just doing text blocks. Nothing fancy because I'm just trying to block it out for pacing. Okay. Okay, so then, uh, you know, I kind of know where the message wants to go. To me, that was the most important thing to nail down first. Now, this video is not, uh, you know, this, the larger part of the project, the video is not done being edited, but it's pretty far along. It's three plus hours long at this point. Um, so what I did was I, from the editor, I said, well, just give me where, wherever you're at, give me an export of what you're working on, of the whole thing. I know it's going to change. I know, um, 
you know, you're going to tweak it a lot. But what I need just, instead of getting all the raw footage, I wanted shots that were actually already in the video. And this was an easier way uh, to avoid going through all the raw footage, you know, and have something to start with right off the bat. So what I did was, I went through, again, a little challenged by these windows. I went through the master, this is the master sequence, and I started to set markers for anything that I thought could be interesting. And again, these are all being lifted from the master, so there are some effects in here already. So, you know, this took a little time, but I went through it at like three times normal speed, and anything that was visually interesting, because I knew I wanted to cut this quickly, so I wanted things that would read very quick and, were, and would tend to be close-ups, because, you know, wide shots are not going to read as well in, in this case. So I took some of the selects and I cut this. It's a little better. Now the problem here too is because I'm lifting it from the master, and the master has shots lifted from different masters because there's some flashbacks and things like that, um, I'm getting all kinds of different color variations and the footage obviously doesn't match. There's a whole lot of different things going on. So on my next pass, I decided to, to kind of even it all out. I wanted to make everything black and white. Whoops, hold on, went backwards. So I basically just took all the color out, all the same shots, but now I feel like I have something I can build that, that's very similar across the board. Okay. Okay, so now I got the black and white, but you know, I don't want to leave it in black and white. So what I did was I started adding extra layers of colored graphics on top with half opacity, different transfer modes to get a different look. So I, I'm adding more motion to even some of the slower shots now just by having these different graphics. So if I were to just pick one of these two. So this is basically one of the graphic layers, just a lot of noise. This is just stock graphics. I think these, some of these are art beats. This is another one. This one was slowed down because uh, it just fit what I was doing better. Okay, so moving on. Wanted to add more texture, so I've added the color. Now, if you like, in this one shot here, you'll see there's a grid. And again, I'm, I'm just looking to add more and more motion to it. So this is the grid, just raw. And I took elements like that, black and white elements throughout, and I just put them in different places. And... Okay, the one thing I knew I wanted to do from the beginning was use Google Earth. Um, there's a free version of Google Earth, and then there's the paid version of Google Earth. If you can afford it, or your client can afford it, and, it, and I got lucky in that a client of mine six months earlier had purchased a one-year license for a project, so I had access to it. But it, if you have the pro version, you can actually render out an HD QuickTime movie, which is what I did for two reasons. One, um, well actually, for, the main reason is that I wanted to blow it up. Um, when you do render it out, it still gives you things around the edges that you don't necessarily want, like Google Earth and other kind of text information. So what I did was I rendered out way bigger than I needed it, and then I blew it up since it was HD and I'm editing an NTSC. Uh, I was able to kind of crop out everything I didn't want. So this is one of the Google Earths. And it's literally zooming into where he was going, Botswana, Africa. It happens fast, but again, I'm not looking for terrible accuracy at this point. In fact, there's another one here. This one uh, was kind of an inside thing that I, I had to actually tell the client about, but f this one zooms into his office in downtown Chicago. So that's his building and his parking lot and everything. So, um, but he's ta it's talking about his, his place at that point. So I did that throughout where it made sense. Um, and, and I also didn't take just the Google Earth raw as you, as you would get it from there. I also wanted to treat it so it didn't necessarily look like 
Google Earth because it's getting used in so many places, it's pretty easy to spot now. So let's see what we got here. So this is the actual raw HD file. It's probably not going to play in real time. But you can see I wanted to get rid of the Google. There's some text here. There's this little compass. And, um, and it was also way too slow. So I, I cranked up the speed quite a bit. And I, again, I made it black and white. I treated it with some color effects just to kind of give it its own look. OK, so now I'm back to the text frames. And I wanted to use something other than the text tool inside of Final Cut. And so what I did was I went into After Effects, created this, the, the text that I needed, and I used a, um, just kind of a wiggle expression with a lot of motion blur to give it this kind of chaotic feel to it. Again, the whole idea was to kind of build up tension um, during this opening sequence. Okay, let's see what else here. Now some of these are still over black, but in the next pass, instead of it just being over black, I added some grain. Uh, again, this is stock, stock footage. Okay, then in the final frame, I basically wanted to do something pretty cool at the end. And so again, I went into After Effects. And I played around with um, doing some 3D text with the uh, Zaxworks plugin. And then I had the little effect at the end. And I want to emphasize too that even when I picked the music, even when I sat down with the music, I had no idea necessarily where I was going. Every, every sequence you, you're seeing here was another layer of me figuring out, okay, seeing what I've seen, where do I want to go next? Where do I want to go next? And, and obviously you're not seeing a lot of the things I tried and didn't work. You're seeing everything I stuck with. There were a lot of things that I tried that I went, oh my God, that's awful. And then, of course, I didn't save it. So it's not as if this went 10 sequences and I was done and I loved it. There were many things I tried that I didn't like. But for me, the fun part of doing this was because it was for free, there was no budget, meaning there was no time restriction. So I was free to play more than I normally would when I'm billing hourly and they're sitting across the table, you know, wondering why it's taking so long. Um, so for me, I just had fun with it and I tried all kinds of things. Some things worked, some things didn't. Um, and in the end, I showed it to the client and he changed one thing, which was just one of the text screens. He wanted to say something different and nothing else and he loved it. So, you know, that was pretty cool, especially after spending all that time on it. It probably took me, uh, over the course of two months, it took me probably a total of four or five days. I would stay late and do three, four hours at a time. Um, but it, I was keeping track, and I know it was close to four or five days of total time. Again, I probably could have done it quicker if I wasn't playing around so much. But, uh, you know, that's what I had. So going back, I have a couple more things here real quick. Okay, some of, the favorite, some of my favorite places to find um, resources. Uh, movie trailers, we all know you can get those at uh, Apple. Uh, Blur Studios is a really great um, high-end graphics company, and they always have great demo reels online, so I like to go see what their demo reel looks like. And uh, again, see if I can kind of borrow some of their ideas. Adobe has this great resource that not a lot of people know about, at least I didn't know about it until not that long ago. And uh, it's cooler.adobe.com. It's a whole website set up to just help you pick colors. You pick, let's say you pick a few primary colors, like I know I want blue and I know I want something else, and it will create a complementary palette. Um, not only can you uh, obviously save what you're seeing on screen, uh, on some of the Adobe products you can actually save the palette as a custom setup and load it into, let's say, After Effects or Photoshop. So I have found that very useful to go there and kind of make my own color palettes up and you know, not feeling like, feeling like I'm just going all willy-nilly. There's a lot of design, great stuff at the Adobe site. Apple has a lot of video profiles on their pro site that, again, I like to go to and, and see what some of these other companies are doing. I love the way Apple shoots and cuts their pieces. They're very clean, and they're, they're always shot beautifully. Uh, Archive Magazine is, if, if you want to try the whole print ad idea, Archive Magazine is uh, a magazine that comes out three or four times a year, and it's a collection of print ads from around the world. But because they're all of the best ads, it still makes for an interesting you know, flip through to get ideas. So I'll, I usually have one of those in the edit suite. 
And if anybody, if you can't write this stuff down, you can always email me. And um, that's my email address. And I'll, I'll definitely send you back this in a, a better form. Here's some of the places to find me. Um, I have a professional blog that I do with a couple editors uh, that I work with at the office, uh, sweettake.com. And we try to do posts uh, at least once a week. We're trying to go up from there. But for a while, it was once every six months. So we think once a week is actually pretty good right now. And uh, I'm also on that side. I have a survey there if anybody's interested in kind of giving me feedback. I haven't done a lot of presentations. And I'm trying to maybe do more of them, maybe improve my skills. So if you have any feedback at all, that would be a great place to anonymously Leave me your feedback. Of course, you can add your name, but you don't have to. And I uh, have a little bit of time for questions. Do I have yeah. Q&A time? Any questions? How long was that uh, opening? It was about 42 seconds. 42. I was shooting for 30, but I couldn't get the music down to where I liked it at 30. Speaking of the music, did you, um, was that uh, royalty-free music? Or it was. Uh, it was royalty-free, so I didn't have to report it. Pretty good for royalty-free. <laughs> well, it was a lot of crap I had to go through to get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's a good one too. Then, um, recently too, uh, CNN did a show called Heroes. I don't know if anybody saw it, but the style of storytelling that they did is very similar to a lot of what I do at the office, and that to me, I found. Um, just simply in storytelling, they had a lot of different ways of telling the same story. And so I basically saved that for my TiVo, burned it, and gave it to a couple of the clients that did this kind of work. And it actually had a, a, an influence on a project that we did literally like a month later. Uh, and so that's a good example of seeing something, really focusing on it, and, and it making a difference. And it, I think it really raised the bar on what we would have otherwise done on the project. Any other questions? What about some resources for some royalty-free music? I couldn't help you with that, um, only because all the music we have is through a client that purchased it a long time ago. I mean, we literally have walls of it, and so I'm lucky that I have access to it, but I've never actually paid for it. So. You mentioned the use of After Effects in some of the portions of your project. Yes. Could you quickly describe your round trip workflow? Um, how no round tripping. <laughs> I basically, I knew what I wanted. I mean, in this case, you can see it was pretty simple. I had a title, and I basically created a title longer than I would need it. And after, in, um, in Final Cut, I rendered it out a little bit longer, and I just cut the part that I needed in. Uh, at the end, I did a little more timing of what I wanted, but again, it was all in After Effects. Um, and so there was no, it was basically a one-way trip. It was just from After Effects into Final Cut, and that's it. Yes? Were the Botswana uh, tap? There's a fast like, uh, sequence of you know, yes. flashes. Did you make that or is that from the video as well? I made that, but um, uh, does everybody know what he's talking about? There was like a really fast sequence. Um, that was a cheat. It looks like a lot of cuts, but what it was was a 6,000% speed up on a lot of shots. <laughs> I think I took maybe a minute or two worth of, of, of footage that was just you know the regular video, and I just crammed it all in there, and it looked great the first time I did it. I'm like, okay, good. I don't have to cut anything. <laughs> yeah, because again, it was again just the feel of it. You didn't need to identify any shots, right. so it was a, a kind of a cheat. Mm -hmm. good cheat, a good cheat, but a cheat. Anybody else? All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>